This right here is the best bang for buck multifunctional thermal currently in 2024 and I'll show you why. Um. This is an updated version of our favorite helmet mounted thermal, uh, the Jerry YM. It has some uh, new features, some new color palettes, some uh, new menu options. Tabletop reviews are nice, but uh, we're gonna go outside, we're gonna shoot with it, we're gonna uh, go to the field, test, test the limits, and we're gonna see why this is the best bang for buck uh, multifunctional thermal of 2024. We have this uh, thermal attached to our uh, own adapter, like this. So just uh, our regular dovetail attachment and clips into this so you can have a stabilized thermal camera. Uh, the weather is very foggy and we're showing you all the functions of the new thermal. What we have on the Jerry YM, we have a digital zoom. That guy is around uh, 200 meters away and you can zoom in pretty close and uh, see what he's doing. Uh, if anyone can guess what that guy is doing, you're the man. Different color palette options, uh, rainbow, green hot, green outline. You can change the different outline colors as well and white hot. Now going into the menu, you have several options. Uh, under the image, you can adjust uh, brightness. This setting is for when you use it at nighttime, for example, and you don't want to blind yourself with the extra display brightness. This is where you can uh, tone it down a little bit contrast in some situations you might want to change the contrast as you can see here if you put the contrast higher you can actually see more in the deep fog in the further distance you can see the other bank of the lake but at contrast of one you can barely make it out so set the contrast to where you see the most detail in your environment when we are in uh, red hot mode you can change the red value so at one, it only highlights pretty much really warm targets like the human and not those platforms on the ice. But as you increase it, you can see it highlights more. And at max, it's actually a bit too much in, uh, in many different uh, situations. It starts highlighting or creating a lot of unnecessary red spots, as you can see right here. It's the outline mode. Here you can choose what color outline you might want. So white, red, green, whatever you like best. Uh, you can also turn on the reticle if you want to use it as a standalone site and you can uh, have all the options, you can change the reticle. Uh, under settings, you have uh, a whole bunch of different things which I'm not gonna go into. However, you can also see working hours so you can see how long your device has been online and uh, clip on mode but uh, we can't change to clip-on mode during the video. One more feature, if you hold the front button that you can zoom with, if you hold it down, uh, it does a manual shutter reset. So if you've been staring at, at one spot for quite a long time and it burns the image into your sensor, you can uh, reset it. If you press and hold, the rear button uh, it starts filming and if you press it uh, for a short time it'll take an image like this now we are comparing the new cherry ym and the pfn 640 side by side and we're gonna see how much their image clarity and overall quality differs right in front of me you can see 200 meters up to 300 meters and you can clearly tell that there's people there, they're walking their dogs. You can see quite a lot of detail from this distance. There's not uh, a huge difference between these devices. But as we go further, the rock right there is 300 meters. And also not much of a difference between the two devices. The PFN is a little bit brighter on the white hot around 600 to 700 meters. Still, you can see cars driving, people walking. But the difference between the devices is more visible. As you can see, the PFN has a lot crisper white hot 
and uh, YM not so crisp but still easily identifiable. You can count the windows, you can see all the small details in the buildings. Here, uh, this monument here is 1900 meters and anyone walking here is around uh, 1800 meters so you can actually identify that there's a person walking up to 1800 or even more. Not so well on the YM, but still, if we zoom in, we can see that right here, there's people walking. You cannot see the exact outline, or you cannot maybe even identify that's a human being, but you can see the tall, slender figure moving, so you can assume those are humans. And here, when you zoom in with the PFN, not much of a difference. The white hot is just a little bit more bright, but the people are still visible, almost the same as the PFN. And you can even see the birds flying over a kilometer away. The weather conditions currently are it's very humid, it's close to freezing temperature, and we're filming over water, which might change some things. Uh, this is black hot, 200 meters, 300 meters. You can see the dogs, people walking. Very nice, clear image. Six, 700 meters. Same thing, you can see people on the beach, a lot of detail. And now the furthest distance, black hot, maybe even slightly better image than white hot. The YM has a lot more color palettes, but for comparison, we went straight to red hot. As you can see, they are quite different. The YM has this flat red color and the PFN has a range from yellow, orange to red. But the detection is even better uh, with this color palette. It highlights all the heat signatures. As you can see, there's uh, birds flying around, street lamps. Now at 600, 700 meters, same thing. Uh, all the heat signatures stick out really well. This is what uh, this color palette is made for. It just sticks out everything that's really hot. Nothing special. Now let's go to the furthest distance. Let's zoom in. As you can see on the PFN on the left, you can see that bright red and yellow uh, it identifies a person at 1800 meters as red hot, but the YM does not pick up the same detail from this distance. It does identify a person walking, but it doesn't give red hot. So this is the rainbow mode. I don't see the use for this. However, it might work in some situations, I don't know where. It does identify all the people, as did all the previous ones. However, if there's uh, more movement, a lot of different heat signatures, it kind of kind of gets crowded and hard to tell what's what. And looking far away, this is just terrible. You can still differentiate between uh, vehicles, humans, all the same, but there's a lot of unnecessary noise coming from this color palette. Now we're looking at the extra color palette options for the YM. Uh, this is green hot, which is basically like white hot. It's just green. Maybe you can find some use for it if you have a green phosphor night vision and you want to dual mount it. Same thing, 200 meters, 300 meters, the same as white hot, easily distinguishable bodies. Six, 700 meters, you can see people walking on the beach, on the shore, cars, everything very distinguishable. And the furthest distance, you can easily see people walking, cars. Now we're looking at a cool color option for the YM, which is green outline. Does it have any advantages over the other outlines? You can identify movement really well. It outlines all the hot objects and you can see them moving very easily. 300 to 600 meters. All the people are very well outlined. Also the buildings, cars, everything is actually really well drawn out. And now let's go far away. Looking at this, you see why it's not ideal for long distance. Welcome back to the range. The most qu asked question about this thermal has been, can you use it as a clip-on? The answer is yes. The setup we're using uh, is a magnifier, red dot and the thermal. You mostly seen probably LPVO and thermal. We like to use this. It's uh, more modular. You can also use it with a night vision. You can just pop this off and uh, 
use the red dot with your night vision uh, when you take off the thermal. And uh, I'll show you how it works. So you have to eliminate the image in the thermal to match what you see through your scope and then you can line up the thermal image so you can make accurate shots. Show you the different color palettes. This is white hot, black hot, rainbow, which is actually the best uh, rainbow palette of uh, any of the thermals that I've used. It's actually usable. Green hot. Green outline. And red hot. So this, as you see, uh, has way, way too much noise currently. You can uh, adjust this in the settings as, as you see in the video. This is the menu. For the for clip-on mode, what you can do is change the brightness. And this one is for uh, collimating the thermal picture to your sights. You have the X and Y axis where you can uh, shift the picture in your thermal left and right, Y axis up and down. And uh, the G you have up here are preset values for your X and Y. So if you use it on different weapons, as you see, it changes, changes the collimination and you have five, five different preset settings. One issue that you might encounter is with uh, choosing batteries. We had this problem at the start. We were using a battery that did not have this knob, so it was flat on both sides. So when you're shooting, it actually moves inside the thermal and it disconnects. So when you're using batteries, make sure you use it with the knob. Otherwise, your thermal might shut off during shooting. During the course of the video, I have uh, mentioned a couple times about helmet mounting this device. And this is what I have in mind, uh, dual mounting this with uh, lightweight uh, night vision monocular. You have the lightest setup uh, of this kind that you can have. Having the Cherry YM and T14 with our own bridge. And you can have both capabilities, night vision and thermal. Let's put it on and go outside and see why just having a night vision is just not good enough. Now we're outside checking out the difference between just using a night vision and the thermal. Keep in mind that uh, the image you see is not exactly what you would see in real life. However, if you use the collimination feature in clip-on mode, you can get something similar to this. As you can see on the left, you can basically see the person if, if he's moving, but if the background matches up with the person's clothes and when he's not moving with the night vision, you will probably miss it. But as you see with the thermal overlay, it will give you a really clear indication that something's there. Here we have uh, someone in a very good lighting condition at around 200 meters away. If you just look with the night vision, you can easily see that there's nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing that you can see. If there's no movement, that person is virtually invisible. Now, the thermal changes this. Even having a small part of your body exposed or in the line of sight of your thermal, you're visible instantly. And also the different color palettes. If you have a green phosphorus, you can match it up with your green phosphorus night vision. Makes it easier for your brain to eliminate the images. Now let's go into the woods. In the woods, you can see that without having a thermal, you're gonna be in trouble as you can't see pretty much anything. If there's a person 50 meters away, you can't, you can't uh, identify anything. And the best, best for detection or scanning is obviously red hot. Everything that's hotter than the rest, let's say a person, as, as you're scanning, will immediately pop out. As you see, with the night vision, someone hiding behind a tree is virtually invisible. Even if you know what you're looking at, you can't see the person. With the thermal, it's, uh, it's clear as day. You cannot hide from it. This uh, device comes in a box like this. 
let's check out the box. What's inside? We have this uh, carry bag, uh, helmet mount, and uh, helmet adapter for the thermal. In the bag, we have the thermal device itself. In the other compartment, we have the eye cups for uh, clip on and helmet mounted, the carry handle for the same pouch, or the weapon mount, uh, lens cleaning cloth, uh, hex tool, and there's also a bunch of uh, screws. And that's the contents of the hard case. The thermal can be attached to the helmet with the, with the mount that it, or the attachment that it comes with. It has a dovetail that goes into this helmet mount, which is a clone. Uh, this is a weapon mount. You can uh, mount this in front of your optics. In conclusion, there is no such thing as a cheap and good thermal, but we believe Cherry YM is the closest thing to it. It performs almost as well as the PFN uh, costing just a little bit less. It can be used on a weapon, helmet mounted and handheld. We recommend mainly to be used handheld and helmet mounted. We have shot with it quite a lot and it works. Uh, if you agree with us, let us know. If you don't, show us which one is better. If you have any questions about night vision, thermal or anything related to them, uh, write us an email or go on our website and write us on there. Thanks for watching and see you next time.